Hello everyone, Morris here, and today I'm bringing you a, some updates with Axie Infinity Origins, and it's a pre-season 6 update, meaning before a season 6 starts, and there are quite a lot of updates, and the thing I quite like about this update is that it's really for all sorts of players, for like free-to-play player, but also for collectors and hardcore gamers. Uh, so let's just get into what are the updates. So uh, here's a summary, really, um, and I'm just going to scroll through. And uh, of course, if you want more details, uh, check out the blog post uh, in the description below. Uh, and the TLDR really is um, two new starter axes with rage synergy. So they're trying to get more uh, synergistic starter axes. So new players can try and you know build their own teams and understand more about synergies. So uh, and one of them, I feel like, could be pretty OP. Uh, so. Um, so that's that. And then uh, the other big change is that there is a bit of a mechanic change with the energy burst. Again, more details later. Uh, but the gist of it is that you get to energy burst faster and also you get one extra card draw after the first energy burst. Right? So because before you needed two and now you just need one energy burst to get the extra card draw. So that actually changes quite a lot of things, I feel. Uh, and then I would say the third biggest update, which could be the biggest update, is that the introduction of uh, something called mirror charms. And they are charms that actually, you can think of it as just replacing one of your cards to uh, at one cost, either an attack, heal, or shield card. All right? And uh, this really makes a lot of those uh, budget axes more viable, or as a budget, and it could be collectible as well, all right? where you know maybe the parts are not so synergistic and with the mirror charms, you can actually swap well the card out to another card that's maybe more synergistic. Maybe you want more heal, maybe you want more shield or attack. And uh, yeah, in summary, really, right? Of course, there are a lot of uh, I would say a lot of changes. There's quite a number of changes, and the summary is really that bleed, fury, AOE, and single carry teams are. I think the winners for this update, whereas the losers, I feel like it's probably going to be sustained and cursed teams. And you'll see why uh, in a bit more details when I you know, go into the, the updates. So let's just start with the two starter axes. So first one we have Sha, and it is a rage synergistic one, but it's more about shielding. Right? So it's about attack, gain rage, and shield. Okay, so I don't think I'm going to the you know like all the different cards, but I do want to point out I think the runes and charms because those are the ones that you you know you can use even without uh, the starter axes, right? Uh, and in this case, the rune is uh, just shattering shield, and what it does is that it gains one rage to well, I guess gives one rage to all allied axes the first time this axe loses 30 shield so it's kind of like a tank and then you're supposed to gain shield with Sha and then uh, yeah when let's say the opponent hits into you break the shield or like at least deal 30 damage to the shield then your whole team gain one rage so that's basically uh, how it works I must say the power level is not too high um, yeah it doesn't really do anything else other than just giving one rage per turn uh, so yeah so that's that and for the charm is penguin shard and what it does is that um, it's a beast okay note that it's a beast charm so you can only put it on beast card and you can only put it on beast multi-hit and AOE attacks which are not that many even though this update introduced a, a few more uh, but still uh, and and the effects is uh, gain one shield per damage dealt uh, and a cap at 30 shield so basically you're supposed to put in an attack card or multi-hit or AOE and then you can gain 30 shield um, so it's a you know uh, gain 30 shield kind of charm which can be quite good but uh, you know you have to be more of a mid rangey team right where you want to gain shield uh, through your attack and there's a cap of 30 as well and 30 is not that much to be honest uh, so yeah so so that's that but if there are some you know shield synergistic uh, teams uh, with uh, you know like beast AOE card, then that could work. Okay, so uh, yeah, I'm not going to go into the cards too much. Of course, I uh, check out the uh, blog post if you just want more details. Okay, the next uh, star actually is Bing, and I feel like Bing has quite a bit more potential. And it's uh, okay, let me scroll up a bit more first. Uh, it is, it can do quite a lot of things. So it's again synergistic with Rage, but uh, it's also attack. 
uh, it can heal, it can purify, it can draw as well, and it can snipe. When I say snipe, I mean um, apply taunt to the opponent axi. So there are quite a lot going on. So let's just talk with the, the, the sniping card really, right? So it's uh, uh, this one. Um, Toy ball and it's actually I would say similar to Pokey. Uh, the effect is target the lowest uh, HP enemy, apply to taunt. So I guess it's uh, yeah more similar to Pokey than than Shrimp. But note that it is a single attack card, meaning you can put Rocket Stem on this as well. So this can help you basically like can act as a as a Shrimp. Um, so the other cards that's uh, worth noting really is the Puppy. Uh, I think. The puppy mouth in particular, because there are actually three puppies, right? The eye, mouth, and ears. And I would say the, the mouth is really worth um, reading more. Uh, okay, I'm trying to get into it more. So what it does is, uh, it limit one, which is, of course, very important. But it says, uh, okay, plus one rage to ally XE. So that's, you know, it's actually a good starting point. Um, because uh, if you actually manage to get to Rage, right? Uh, sorry, get to Fury, then what it says is that draw four cards if your team has an Axe in Fury form, right? So meaning it is a one energy. Draw four card if you manage to get one of your Axes in Fury mode. And this card itself, when you play it, already gain one Rage to all ally Axe. Of course, you can put uh, charms on this to make it even more effective in gaining Rage. So, uh, and of course, drawing four cards is huge, especially in Fury team, where sometimes, most of the time you're just like, oh, okay, you gain the Fury, but you don't have the cards to play. But this draw four, I think, uh, I won't say it, uh, it, might, it might even break the game, I feel, uh, it's because it is you know, so powerful uh, in Fury kind of team. Uh, so yeah, so that is the main thing about Bing. I will also talk about the runes and charms as well. So, uh, but let me just um, okay, I think okay. Uh, so for the runes and charms, uh, the rune is Bing's chill wins, and um, you know, to be honest, not not too exciting. So this axis heal card grants plus one rage to allies with less than four rage. Right. So the condition here makes it very like. No, very limiting, I must say, and that's why uh, it's probably not going to be used too much. Just because, uh, yeah, uh, once you get to once your ally actually get has more than four rage, it doesn't do anything. Right? So, um, if it doesn't have this condition, then it'll be very, very good. But yeah, with this condition is yeah, from, you can give it a try with like a starter actually, you know, like um, but. Um, Maybe there are some teams that might run this just so that you can, you know, ramp up rage even faster, or maybe even do two times. Uh, you get to a fury uh, twice. Um, maybe that can get into this kind of team. Uh, okay, so for Bing's ice cream, then uh, it is a again a beast card, and it can alter any attacks. And it says uh, heal ally axes equal to 20% of this card's attack. So this is actually has quite a bit more potential. Uh, again, it's again more like a mid rangey kind of thing because you attack and then you heal. But I do feel like it has some kind of uh, oak bud kind of feel, where let's say you pull it on a very strong attack, maybe like a Shiva or something, right? Uh, which I think is now two energy 140. But anyway, right? So then it heals 20%, right? Um, yeah, that that's actually quite a lot. Uh, yeah, so, uh, and it all heals for all ally axes. Of course, it's not easy to get all the value just because uh, it heals all ally axes. It's an AOE heal, but still, uh, I think it could have some potential, especially in a meta where there's just a lot of uh, discard, uh, which we've seen at the end of last season where, you know, Leafy just run but just because like retain doesn't really mean anything anymore uh, then yeah I think Bing's ice cream could could see play okay uh, then let's get into I guess the third change with uh, starter axis and this Bulba so actually um, you know the two starter new starter axes are meant to kind of be synergistic with Bulba just because it's also a rage synergy the only change really is uh, Bulba brush which is now a two cost AT attack and it has retained and it says deal 85 
uh, percent splash damage in theory form. So uh, I would say a bit of a buff, a bit of a nerf. Right. So it's better in early game um, where once you get to theory, then it actually deals quite a bit more damage to the other two axes. But at the late game, it will be a bit you know um, not as good. So uh, yeah. So that's the the change. Okay, so in terms of uh, game mechanic, and uh, there's quite, quite a bit. So first thing is ambush, which is a new keyword, which but is ex to ex describe an existing effect, which is target the closest and or furthest enemy. So you can target the closest or furthest enemy, and now this is called ambush, which I guess makes it uh, easier. Uh, no, shorter to put in a card as well. And uh, the other updates are dispel and cleanse. So uh, they now change it such that it's uh, it's always just one stack or one turn. Of course, the cards are going to be changed accordingly, but I feel like it's a good change. Right? It just makes it more like flexible. Of course, it has certain impacts. For example, um, you know, now it may be a bit harder to cleanse off your sleep completely, just because sometimes you might try and um, maybe have a 50-50 chance of cleanse cleansing off your sleep, but now it might be a bit harder just because each cleanse remove one stack. So it could be that it remove one, you know, maybe just two stack of sleep, whereas you have three stacks then you know, you still have one stack remaining, then it's a bit, you know, not, not too helpful. Uh, so that might have some impact, but uh, in general, I think it's a good change, a good direction in terms of just making the game easier to understand. Uh, and then some, I guess some people might have something to say about the next update, which is a, a turn timer. And I'll change to 45 seconds. I must say, it's like I'm a pretty slow player, so sometimes I really run out of time just because I need to think more, especially in turns where I need to draw, right? So if you play a clear or nerdy or something, then yeah. Uh, they did say that they speed up uh, the animation for Feather Dagger, that kind of thing, which helps, but still. Um, yeah, just basically we just need to think faster. Okay, then um, this is actually quite significant. The next one is removing the free keep for player two. Uh, so that just means you know, it kind of nudges down the player two win rate and hopefully we'll get closer to 50-50. And finally on this, uh, this is, yeah, yeah, I would say the biggest change in mechanic in that sense is that the energy burst scaling has changed. Uh, and it's a lot faster to get the energy burst now. So you only need 12 fragments right, to get to the first one, and then 16 fragments to get to the second one, uh, and so on. Right. So 12 and 15 is really pretty significant. And now, uh, you know, there are certain teams that I feel like might drop Cotton Tail just because you know you need eight to get uh, to use Cotton Tail, and if you just gain a few more, you get the energy burst. Right. So of course, Cotton Tail still gives you early tempo advantage but uh, you know the, there could be trade-off right and there could be teams and it definitely benefits teams that are you know that don't really run corn tail anyway so yeah, especially teams that run like uh, Nemo tail kind of team right they'll get to energy burst faster so it certainly benefits some teams and not others and I could see that certain teams might drop corn tail for something else like Nemo tail uh, the other main uh, change is about the card draw. So previously, you have to get to the second energy burst to get additional card draw. All right, now after one energy burst, right, you already get the additional card draw, and this is huge. Uh, this because that gives people more incentive to get to uh, the energy burst, uh, especially the first one, right? So that then you can draw six cards instead of five per turn, and that really hurts. Jinx, uh, not just Jinx, but like Curse team in general, especially like the, the confused uh, Swirl team, because now opponents is trying to get to uh, the you know energy burst. Uh, and the other thing that's hurting, I guess Jinx team also, not just Jinx, but this Curse team in general, is this particular effect, which is uh, you gain an additional energy fragment if you end your turn with at least one leftover energy. Right, so especially against like swirl, confused kind of thing, then uh, it is like it's likely that you might not have enough cards to even use all the energy. Then you you know gain more energy, and you definitely will get to the energy burst a bit faster. Um, so yeah, that's uh, another yeah. So yeah, that's another effects that could impact 
the meta quite a bit and I do feel like it, it's going to be a bit faster which overall I think um, in the town hall uh, they give the impression that they just want the game to go a bit faster and I feel like these changes will make the game quite a bit faster uh, yeah okay so then let's uh, move on to the status effect and uh, I should talk about death mark first because that is the biggest change and it is huge in the sense that now uh, when the Axie has this death mark debuff, it takes pure damage from attacks, right? And that's huge, is because then it basically ignore, ignored any shield. Uh, if the opponent can put death mark on you, then yeah, all your shield doesn't matter anymore. So this is where I guess sustain really has to adapt because sustain is the one that requires uh, or not requires rely on shield a lot, and I think topaz as well. And topaz might actually be even affected more just because. Um, yeah, so the shield, the, they rely a lot on bumpy and things like that. And now there is actually, oh, you, you, you will see later, a charm that actually helps, you know, can you put on the attacks to give death mark to the opponent as well. So this is uh, going to be, going to hurt teams that rely on shield. Okay, there is a bit of a nerf in the sense that, okay, uh, instead of 15, it only takes 12, you know, damage, uh, pure damage um, per energy co cost of the attack uh, but yeah that's not really too significant compared to the main effect that's changed which is having death mark takes pure damage from attacks so that's uh, the main thing uh, I do feel like then what happens is that uh, sustain can still survive but they will need a lot of cleanser uh, and cleanser is also you know, just changed to one stack um, similar to cleanse and the uh, dispel, uh, but of course the cards will be changed accordingly as well. Okay, then let's just go back to the top and talk about Rage. So for Rage, it, there's actually no change except that it can only happen during your turn because now there is a way with the Sarah Axie, right, there's a way to gain Rage on your opponent's turn, but of course you don't want to get into Fury mode in your opponent's turn, though. so this is just ensuring that you will only get to Ray, uh, Fury when you are on your turn. And Fury now, this is actually another big, 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 big change, uh, is that it draws a card. So th yeah, th this kind of solves the problem of um, you know, getting the Fury mode and not being able to have any card. Uh, you know, and now yeah, it draws a card, it just makes it so much more consistent. Uh, so I feel like the Fury team is going to be pretty strong this season. And Feather also has a very big change, and now it says each hit from this Axie or attacks from other allied Axies or other allies with Feathers will, will add to the, the um, Feather count in terms of the buff, right? The, the Feather bonus damage buff. So that just means Feather is going to scale so, so, so much faster, right? Just because any Axie. I think basically literally three times faster, right? Just because any Axie, of course, I, you try to put feathers on every Axie first, right? And uh, there's many ways to do it with, the, of course, Feather Spear, but also try Feather as well. And so you can just assume that if you run a Feather team, all three of your Axies will have Feather, uh, especially in AoE teams. And now like, every single attack then will give Feather, I guess, the add to the bonus, uh, damage count to all three of your axes and yeah this is going to scale a lot faster so I'm quite excited to see how AOE is going to come back okay then uh, for bleed bleed uh, it's just a small change it actually kind of nerf bleed in terms of the effect but there will be more to come uh, so bleed now just loses 12 HP uh, instead of 15 uh, and finally, Snick Jar actually is kind of like a big change in a way. Uh, so now it, they removed the um, the threshold, the HP threshold. So it would, you know, you just have you, you would just get this effect. And it actually says deal damage to all enemies equals to 1.5 times the Snick Jar base shield. And uh, I think the well, they've changed Snick Jar to a 50 shield. So at the base level, it will deal 75. AOE, but of course you can uh, uh, use Charm to increase that base shield to I think 63, which will allow you to do something like 94 damage or something AOE. So in that sense, it's 
uh, still does a similar effect. Right? It still has to, you know, the, the unit that has Snake Jar still has to not die for six turns before the effects will happen. So it's still pretty slow. But now, you know, it becomes a shield card and it doesn't, you know, there's no uh, HP threshold, which makes it easier to, I guess, apply. Okay. Uh, so in terms of two cards, um, I would say a few big changes also. Uh, I would say talk about the biggest one, which is Forest Wrath now has ambush, meaning you can only target the front and not the back, and you can't target the mid. And that is pretty significant because then, uh, especially at least in the epic and uh, rare era, it's a lot harder to target the mid. Uh, and yeah, that's that. Oh, I mean, of course, this only uh, applies to the um, epic era, really, right? Then it's just a lot harder to target the mid. Of course, in the mystic era, you, uh, you still can't target the mid, but there are ways like uh, rocket stamp you know, um, on the shrimp or something to target the mid, but uh, it just makes it uh, quite a bit harder. Uh, to hit the mid, meaning single carry team might actually be quite a bit stronger, just because it's harder to KO it. Uh, okay, then the other change, uh, Forest Breath also get a, a quite significant change, and uh, this now when you want to apply sleep to an opponent, you have to play initial. So uh, that's quite a big change, just because quite a lot of the times um, you want to like put a debuff on yourself first, and then you cleanse. You, like, to get the forest wrath and uh, usually then you put some uh, something to sleep right but now you can't do that just because like during the same turn uh, if you don't have if you already don't already have debuff then you, know, uh, you won't if you use forest breath as a initial then you can't get the forest wrath right so that's definitely a lot weaker or quite a bit weaker now without the sleep uh, yeah and or uh, well, at least without the sleep, unless it's initial. So yeah, so that's the big change. And then, okay, the next one is Goo. For Goo, uh, it's kind of reworked, really. Uh, now it basically is a retain card. So meaning, once you draw Goo, it will stay in your hand unless you play it. And uh, it will consume one energy fragment uh, to exile it, right? uh, if able. If you don't have energy fragment, you can use one energy to exile it. Uh, if not, then it will just stay in your hand, basically, uh, and it effectively clock up your hand, which is, I guess, what Goo kind of does as well. Um, so, yeah, uh, this is an interesting change. Having said that, I still don't think uh, Goo is good enough in terms of like, the cards themselves like that generate Goo, because they're very passive. A lot of them are shield cards. Uh, is this not, yeah, yeah, it's this, it's this hard. I feel like um, to. Uh, yeah, to get the goose. Okay, and then uh, if Purge and Prayer, uh, this change to the spell three and cleanse three. So this is what I mean by like the changes in terms of the spell and cleanse. Um, yeah, so this is in a way a bit of a nerf, is because cleanse beforehand is actually four, but now it's actually three, right? Because uh, before this change, one cleanse equals to like now the cleanse four. Right, so that's a bit of a small change, and you'll see that there are some numerical adjustments to some of the cards um, as well. And finally, Feather Dagger. Actually, this is quite significant, right? Uh, before it was 5 attack, now it's 10, and also it has Ambush, so it can hit the front or the back. So that's, uh, again, it's quite a big buff. Okay, all right, then let's actually get into the cards themselves. Uh, I don't think I'll get into like, every single card, but I'll just get you know into the gist of uh, what has changed. So first of all, it's a beast. Main thing that's changed is bleed. So all the bleed cards, uh, and it's actually not just beast, the reptile cards as well that applies bleeds, now applies six bleeds instead of four. So chubby, uh, yeah, and then and, uh, jaguar, I right, all put six bleeds now. Uh, okay, the next thing is the secrets cards, I guess. You can think of it that way, the anti anti secrets cards. So the Arco and Gerbro. So both of them now change to AoE and now they have the same effect, right? They are one cost. AoE deals 25 damage. Uh, so the net effect is already 75 damage, but then it says detect one, right? Uh, so meaning it hits all the opponent, it'll remove uh, one random um, secret. And then on target with secret, it deals another 10 more damage. 
So it kind of lets you remove a secret and also work out where the shields are for the opponent, that kind of thing. So this, I guess, fits the theme. Having said that, is I feel like it's definitely a nerf to Arco right? because before it was uh, detect two, now it's just detect one, and also sometimes you really don't what I like, need to do AOE, right? You just want to hit one target. So I would say it's a bit of a nerf. Uh, okay, and then um, yeah, the two cost card, right? the little branch and Shiva, just got a bit of a small buff to 140, so just making it even stronger. So that's why Rage is gonna be pretty strong, I feel. And uh, Golda, okay, uh, actually now changed to Goo, so it's still similar because now Goo has changed to a similar effect. Um, and then Confident, a bit of a nerf, I must say. I uh, used to be like Clans Four, now it's Clans Two. So that just means it could be quite significant. For example, let's say if you hit into a potato leaf or something, right? If probably three uh, sleep turns, right? Then one confident is not enough to actually cleanse that off. So there's a bit of that uh, small nerf there. And of course, against poison as well, then you only remove two instead of four stacks. And finally, the risky beast finally become risky. Uh, now it's applying three bleeds to self. Okay, then uh, let's talk about plants, which uh, Leafy took a hit. A uh, small hit, I would say it's not that big, but it's still quite significant. So first is that uh, Leafy itself now consumes four leaves in order to get to the same effect. So, so that's a bit of a small nerf. And I think the other small nerf is the Bamboo Spear, and actually all the spears receive the same nerf, which is that... Um, yeah, you effectively gain one fewer leaves for the allied axes, right? So the axis that plays this card still gain three leaves, assuming that all your, you know, like your team is the spear teams, right? Meaning you have three spears in your deck. Uh, but right, the axis that plays this card get three, but the other two axes only gain two leaves, similar for um, you know, the spikes and feather. Okay, so so that is like the uh, main change in terms of leafy. Uh, another interesting and big change I feel like is uh, beach. So this one, uh, first of all, is that it's now changed to initial detect four instead of detect all. So it's very 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 small nerf. Of course, like usually you want to play it first anyway, and you know, instead of detect all, it's just four. But in most cases, you probably uh, your opponent probably don't have that many like more than four secrets. You no, know, there are cases that could be. So that's that's why it's a small nerf. Uh, but there is uh, in terms of damage, it's a big buff. So even though it's just an 80 attack, but it does say lose 15 percent of your current HP and deal bonus damage equals to two times the HP loss. So assuming, uh, so this is really scaling with your um, current HP, right? Assuming you're at full health, you have 400 uh, health, uh, HP, right? Then this attack uh, will deal basically what? Um, another, you will lose 15%, right? So you'll lose 60, right? And basically it will deal another 120 on top of the 80. So it'll be like a 200 uh, attack card, which is not bad, I must say. Of course, you do lose the 60 health, but uh, you can always heal it back. So, so th yeah, that's a trade-off, and it is pretty interesting card. I can see that it it might see play in some teams, um, but um, it, yeah, unfortunately, it is a horn card, so it can't be played with like leafy teams. Um, but yeah, we might see uh, Sandals team kind of thing fitting this in as well. Um, so yeah, let's see. Uh, and then uh, Rosebud actually got a bit of a buff. Now it's 10 cleanser instead of uh, 8. So this is actually pretty, you know, no, not bad. Um, of course, I do feel like sustain will need cleanser, and this is one of the ways in which you can get cleanser. So Bidden, um, no change really, it's just cleanse 8. And then Mint get a bit of a slight nerf. Now it's plus 3 cleanser instead of uh, plus 4 from before. Uh, and also, Cattail and Ant uh, received a very, very small adjustment where it says apply three turns to self f from the next turn. Right? So in a way, it's kind of still four turns, but it's only three turns from the next turn, meaning uh, you, when you stack Cattail, then it's only you know like six turns instead of eight, uh, but that's really just, the, I would say, a very a relatively small adjustment. Okay, Aqua. For Aqua, I feel like biggest change is probably a 
anemone so that's why I want to talk about that first and uh, so now it has ambush so that's a big one and then it says when played minus 10 attack okay but if you don't play it it doesn't minus 10 attack which is fine uh, but I think the key is really here Whenever an enemy actually dies, plus 20 attack. So that's actually pretty crazy, right? So assuming, okay, you don't use Anemone, like you use other you know, other cards to KO your opponent, then this becomes a 1 cost, 100 attack. And if you KO two opponents, Axis, there will be 1 cost, 120 attacks. Right? Uh, so this is where I think Anemone could be quite a good late game tool. Having said that, of course, it's like kind of similar to Tiny Dino. Um, but uh, you can have you know, two more copies of um, Anemone and you can also, yeah, so, so I think it's quite flexible. It's quite interesting to see whether we, we see more like Anemone team, but of course it's only good, well, it's bad, it, gets, it gets better late game, basically, uh, and early game is not as good. It's still 1 for 80, so which is still not bad, um, yeah. Okay, next one, Koi also actually make, have a pretty big change, so uh, more buff uh, to his attack, so it's 1 for 5 already, which is actually pretty strong. Uh, and then it's like, it adds this effect, right? Consume up to 2 bubbles and deal 15% splash damage per bubble, so effectively 30% uh, splash, which is, uh, I would say, quite, quite good for a 2 cost card, right? Because basically, uh, yeah, you get another like 40 something damage uh, to each of the opponent enemy. So this is like a two cost, uh, maybe even like 200 something damage kind of card. Of course, only good early game um, just because if it's one on one, then like there's, there's no splash damage in that sense. So then that's not going to be as good. So this is a good early game. Uh, I think Aqua can can use or, or any teams can use Koi. I feel um, thinking about like Sandals team. Of course, you don't want to run too many two cost cards as well. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely an interesting change. I do see that Koi has some potential. Okay, around there now the spell five. So that's a bit of a buff there. Um, and then Cisla uh, is uh, actually changed a bit. I would say so now it's ambush and it says um, if debuff cleanse four and deal uh, 15 damage, so kind of uh, a bit of a synergy, I feel, right, uh, with some self-debuff kind of synergy, because there are a lot of, let's say, risky fish or risky beasts, right, that gives your self-debuff, and then you can deal 15 damage and, of course, cleanse the debuff off. Or if not, you can also, uh, if there's no debuff, then you have four cleanser, yeah, which is still not bad as well. So I think it's actually a pretty good change. And um, it could be quite a good buff and synergistic with self um, debuff. Okay, so talking about self debuff, then Risky Fish and our self debuff uh, with three bleed to itself now instead of um, the fear. Okay, Bird uh, has kind of changed the theme a bit uh, because now they have Ambush. Right? Little Owls also have Ambush. Um, Trump has Ambush. So Feather Fan also have Ambush. So allowing you to hit the back. And then we have Winghorn that is actually uh, quite a big change as well. And now it deals four hits. Okay, slight nerf to here, but like four hits. So a base level is actually a buff. But then uh, it only gives you one feather dagger when you hit the opponent uh, with less than 50 health, uh, 50 percent health. Sorry. So uh, you only get f well maximum of four feather dagger, but the feather dagger is buffed right from five to ten. Um, having said that, of course, it scales less well uh, with damage, uh, bonus damage, just because you know before you can get up to six, now you can get only up to four. Uh, so, but still, I think it's still a very strong card just because initially it deals four hits already. So, so I think it's a pretty strong card. Okay, uh, Castro, uh, no change really. This is the spell three. Um, and okay, yeah, I already talked about the feather spear already. Um, yeah, it's similar to the bamboo spear. The other ally axes get one less feather. Okay, then for reptile, uh, I already mentioned bleed cards. Or turn to six, please. So that's why I think bleed is uh, quite a big winner for this, um, yeah, for this time, for this update. 
So I would say the uh, big one is Gila, really. Like, the only change for Poison is really Gila in that sense. And it scales a lot faster now. It's now 2 cost 45, and then it scales as 3 damage per Poison stat instead of 2. But of course, it still has a cap, meaning like, it will still cap um, at the same cap, but it's just that it will scale up a bit faster. I think you only need 25 stacks in order to get to the cap. Um, yeah, which is 120 damage as opposed to 40 stacks to get to the cap. So yeah, this gives poison, uh, I, I guess, uh, a bit more speed. Right? It just has to be a bit faster because I feel like the meta is going to be a bit faster. Um, okay, scaly spears similarly with the other spears, right, the uh, other ally axes get one less uh, one fewer speed, uh, spike in this case, uh, and then yeah, gecko no change really. Uh, well, small change. It clans three instead of clans four, so a very very small, uh, I guess, um, nerf. Uh, and here also, I would say uh, that actually no, scaly spoon is the same, right? In this case, it says dispel six times as opposed to two before. I mean, well, dispel two is the same as six times now, so there's no change. And I would say finally, it's the snake jar. I think I already mentioned. Um, now it becomes a shield card, you can target any ally, Xe, and um, yeah. So note that it's only ally Xe, which is pretty interesting. Um, but usually you want to put the buff on an Xe anyway instead of a summon. And oh, one thing to note is that it lose HP equals to base shield. So in effect, it, this is why the, like Snake Jar is actually not the greatest in the sense that uh, it. In itself, it doesn't have any effect, right? Or rather, you, know, you exchange sh your HP for a shield, right? There's no like net gain in terms of like effect. The only big thing, of course, is the snake jar. And if you manage to put uh, get a snake jar off, of course, it's great. But you know that's where it's, it's, it, I feel like it could be hard to use. Uh, bug cards, okay, of course. Mm, Biggest change again is uh, square teeth and actually it's twin tail. Actually, a lot all of these are quite you know uh, I would say okay I would say all of them are significant. Like ants is the same as cat tail change, so that's not that significant. But square teeth is pretty significant. It's first of all, nerf the damage again. So now consumes up to 60 shield, but the bonus damage is only 50% of the consumed shield, meaning it can only get the bon at most 30 bonus damage, which means it's a zero cost 40, which is still not bad, uh, but as you'll see later, um, you, know, you can't put uh, a lot of charms and like, in terms of runes and charms, the synergy is kind of lost with square teeth, so it makes it uh, not so good. Okay, Garish Worm, uh, now it has initial to for this card, meaning you can only you know have that effect once, so you can't have Garish Worm, Garish Worm in the same turn. Having said that, you can still put um, the Mendes Dagger on this, so you can still, you know, discard two, uh, yeah, with Mendes Dagger, which is still not bad, but uh, yeah, it's gonna be, uh, I guess this card is going to be a lot harder in terms of, you know, you can't discard too many things in one turn, uh, but still, I think it's still going to be pretty essential in Mystic, I feel. Uh, Twin Tail also uh, pretty big nerf. I must say that's why sustain is going to be a bit tougher now because now it's limit one instead of two. So meaning you can only discard one card using Twin Tail right, per turn. Uh, and Buzz Buzz similar change as Leafy really. Uh, you just need more cards in order to scale up faster. So before you just need three and now you need four uh, in order to get to the maximum effect. Okay, so that's for the cards. Let's talk about the runes. And for the runes, I would say the biggest one uh, in terms of change uh, is probably actually well, quite a number. Right? Blunt teeth, attentive program. I think those are the two main ones. And a bit of uh, penguin scale. But let's talk about blunt teeth first. So blunt teeth now change to attack grant one energy fragment per energy spend. So that is the same, but now it doesn't have like this like cap of all oh, like minus 10% for all attacks right but now the effects change to if this actually does not have weak apply two weeks to self okay so first of all is your first attack doesn't have weak right so no it's not affected so that's one thing so you, if you just use one attack uh, per turn with this axi then effectively it's, it's basically just gaining more energy fragment and okay sure if you want to use more attacks uh, 
you have a bit of weak, but weak can be cleansed off, right? Uh, and it actually has more self synergy, right? With uh, you already see sea slug and of course rice and ruin as well. So you can see how this can be quite synergistic with self, uh, yeah, self debuff. So yeah, I can see that this is going to be played for sure in, in rare, I feel, especially with the new change in the uh, energy burst system. It just makes it faster to get energy burst. Yeah, so Blunt Teeth, I think, could be at the scale of an epic rune. Uh, okay, and then I'll, I'll skip all these first, and then I'll go back to those. But like, Attentive Program is the one that I also want to talk about, is because now it says, for every 75 shield cumulatively received from cards, gain one energy fragment. So instead of, okay, I quite like this change is because you don't need to hit the 90 threshold anymore because before you need to have oh, at least 90 shield to gain the energy fragment. Now you don't have that. So meaning it's a lot more flexible, but the downside is that you only gain one energy fragment. So it's going to be a bit slower in terms of the ramp. So uh, power level, I do feel like it's definitely going to be lowered. Um, yeah, so it will just be ramps a bit slower, and there might not be as much, you know, as many, you know, as much reason to 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 play this anymore. But um, yeah, especially if sustain is not having a good time. But we'll see. I do feel like sustain was still going to be there. It's just probably need more um, cleanse or rather cleanser. Um, yeah. Okay, then penguin scale. Now can actually take shield now. Right? Uh, now it's changed to take 20% less, okay, minus 20% unblocked damage from attacks. So before uh, you can't have shield, but now you can have shield. But if you have shield, right, the shield um, no, doesn't get the minus 20% buff, whereas you know unblocked damage will get the minus 20% um, from attacks. So still not bad, but again, mm, right, um, Nothing too special. Okay, uh, Dominant Predator. Uh, I think it's this this very small change. I just uh, apply four, uh, five, three bleeds now instead of um, four or something. I think. All right. Um, not, yeah, not quite sure actually. Let me just double check. Uh, I think I have it here. Yeah. So now it applies three bleeds instead of two. So that is really the the main change here. Uh, and then uh, Giant Bubble, actually a bit of a buff really, because now it has this additional effect of on death. Grant 50% of this Axis uh, Bubble Bomb stacks to other ally Axis, meaning you can put it at the front or like as a tank or something, right? Then uh, if you have Bubble Bombs on this, you can, you know, this will get so-called transferred, uh, at least 50% of it will get transferred to other ally Axis. Um, so I think I think it can can be quite good now I feel and uh, story fighter very very small changes it's a single attack that costs energy right consume so it's basically is this uh, it story fighter doesn't work with square teeth that's basically what it's saying okay and then here uh, I will say brutal claw I think I thought about that first just because brutal claw now bleed has like you can just apply so much bleed or so much faster uh, because all the cards now put six instead of four uh, bleeds turn and now it also brutal crawl is also buffed quite a bit and now it says on targets with bleed single and AOE attacks create bloodstorm right you can see it's just uh, so much better now right because you don't have to you don't have that threshold of oh you have to be above a certain bleed stack then you get bloodstorm now you just say if opponent has bleed then you create Bloodstorm. And then um, they double the bleed stack uh, on targets as well if the target has less than 10 bleeds. Right? So yeah, I can imagine like uh, it's very easy to get to like 15 stacks. Not that it matters, like 10 stacks, 15 stacks, I feel like it's probably going to be the same anyway. Uh, of course, sure, our opponent can, like, it just makes it harder for the opponent to cleanse off. Um, but I do feel like bleed is going to be very, very annoying um, yeah, to play against. Okay, then we have the Feather Descent, and I feel like Bleed is going to be quite a big counter to Feather Dagger kind of build, is because every time you play a Feather Dagger, you do take the Bleed damage. Uh, okay, so Feather Descent also has changed. Now it says, um, you know, at 10 stacks, right, once per turn, right, at 10 stacks, consume 3 Feather and gain 3 Feather Dagger. So you can only get 3. Having said that, 
um, it is, I feel like it's a buff. And the reason why it's a buff is that it says Feather Dagger deals two hits. So each Feather Dagger now, right, the Feather Dagger itself already is buffed to 10. And then now it deals two hit, right? So basically, it just means if you get three Feather Daggers, it does six hits, right? So that, that's pretty significant. And of course, there are many ways, okay, or at least a few ways to get Feather Dagger. Fair Descent, the rune itself, you have the Winghorn, of course, if you want one Momo, you can have like a uh, little bro kind of thing. So I do feel like maybe Momo Fair Descent could still be a thing, but of course it's probably going to be hard countered by bleed stuff. Okay, then the rest is not much of the change. Um, it regenerated exactly the same, uh, just the change in wording. The regen for now, a bit of a nerf, and it's quite, you know, I would say, fair in that sense. So now the AOE heals and shield only have two cleanser, whereas the single targets still have the four cleanser. So it makes it fairer. So it's not like uh, AOE heal is uh, going to you know have a much bigger effect. Now it's like it still have a bigger effect, but not as much. So I feel like it's a fair change. A healing force buff um, to four damage, uh, I think from three. Um, so a bit more damage. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's, this entry is still very similar. I feel like if AOE comes back, this like could fit into AOE quite a bit. Uh, Heaven's Echo, now, okay, quite a significant change. Right? It says now if once per turn, after playing a skill or secret card, other allies gain 20 shield, right? So now it can only gain shield once per turn. So that limits Heaven's Echoes quite a bit. Okay, all right, then uh, let's look at the charms, and this is where I feel like uh, it's one of the biggest changes of innovation to the game, and that is the green, red, and blue mirrors. Okay, so five uh, PP is, is quite expensive at this point, but they might change it, who knows. Uh, but the effect is, is uh, I would say, is, is it's good for budget player, for collectors, you know, probably has zero impact I feel for I won't say zero right there will always be a way to to make this work where like a very very small impact on the highest level uh, just because at the highest level like you have the perfect cards in any way um, the, all the perfect parts so okay let's just get into what the mirror does so effectively for each mirror what it does is that it at the start of the battle, you exile the card I right? meaning you remove that card and replace or not replace but add a mirror card to your deck. So effectively, it's like you take out this card that you don't want and you add in another card. And those other cards depends on the mirror. Of course, like green mirror is a heal card, one cost, heal 60. Red mirror, one cost, deal 70 attack. And blue mirror, one cost, 65 shield. So pretty basic, but I do feel like it's it's going to improve uh, certain teams, or at least like certain axes quite a lot. Let's say, oh, you just need more attack, right? Uh, then, you know, if your whole team is all about attack, then, yeah, you can change it to an attack card. Uh, if your whole team is more about shielding, then you can change to a shield card. So, yeah, so this is, I would say, makes a lot more budget axe viable, and it really makes it more welcoming uh, for new players who don't want to invest too much and just maybe buy some floor axie and they can already improve the axie through these mirrors. Uh, the downside uh, could be, right, I don't know how the economy will go, but it could be that um, and maybe more people will buy the floor axes and maybe fewer people will buy suspend to buy the more so-called optimal axes. Um, who knows, all right? Uh, let's see, so next one, this is actually another big charm I feel, uh, it's an epic charm, it's a blood pack and it says it can only be put on a single attack and it applies 3 death mark uh, on the opponent and that's pretty good right, uh, because death mark now allows opponent to take pure damage so pretty good against let's say things like uh, topaz and of course sustain. All right. It does have a downside of applying three to self, uh, three bleed to self, and it could also be a good side as well. Right? As you can see, there are quite a bit of self buff synergy. Uh, sorry, self debuff synergy uh, with, of course, rise and ruin. Um, yeah, so it's actually a quite easy way to trigger rise and ruin now, uh, just to put this charm on. And uh, of course, there's a sea slug that kind of thing, but I think rise and ruin 
will love this charm just because uh, I remember before uh, you put a poison uh, it was called um, yeah, the charm that gives you poison and then you hit yourself right with gecko or something to actually get poison on yourself so that you can cleanse it but now yeah the, the, there's a better way to do it okay and then for white sage um, similar to I guess before the now it's cleanse 2 right, for AOE and uh, shield and heals uh, and still cleanse four for single targets. And for backstage, um, dispel one for AOE, um, and basically dispel four for single attack. So actually, it's a slight buff, I do feel, because it's not uh, dispel four, because it's bonus three, right? So it's dispel four on a single target, and it's supposed to three, so which makes the buff, um, yeah, actually, it's. A good counter for um, a lot of teams that relies on buff. I'm thinking about like leafy, that kind of thing, right? It can remove quite a lot of leaves with Black Sage. Okay, then we have the, uh, I guess, finally the these charms and Moon Stem is removed, right? So you can't really hit the mid anymore, uh, except for Rocket Stem. And then Earth Stem actually uh, get a bit of a buff where it says it still does uh, attack to random enemy, but then if it hits the front, meaning the closest enemy, it deals plus 15%. And I can see that this is uh, maybe like an, a good way to uh, buff certain cards that has like high attack right? by 15%. That's not bad, right? If you have a way to uh, you know, put Torn on an opponent's front, this will deal a lot to the opponent's front. So. And that's another way of using Earth uh, Stem now, so that's pretty good. Sun Stem now also get a bit of a change to Ambush, so you can now hit the front or the back. So that's, um, I would say, a pretty good change. Uh, and then, okay, uh, a bit of a nerf to Energy Drink M, so instead of Banish, now you have Exile, so that, like, I guess it contribute less to Topaz, so that's why I feel like Topaz definitely got a bit of a nerf, even though Topaz is a, it's not really touched that much, but uh, square Teeth nerf, uh, Energy Drink M nerf, um, yeah, and then the the blood, uh, not the blood moon, the um, Death Mark change definitely hurts Topaz quite a bit. Okay, Mantis Dagger, uh, literally just changed to um, discard one random card per energy cost. Okay, so uh, for all, uh, from the enemy hand or draw power. So literally, just says okay, square teeth can't push minus dagger. Uh, the I guess the other change is sandal. Actually, now it's got two cards, so I can see that maybe people will start running sandal, use minus dagger, it's got two cards. Uh, so that is actually a bit of a buff to sandal, and I'm quite excited to see like sandal team uh, working out this season um, with mantis dagger. Uh, okay, and then we have uh, Red Sage. Um, so for Red Sage, uh, really not much change. Again, it's just the AOE heal and shield now only cleanse two, whereas uh, the single target cleanse four. Okay, so that is pretty much it. Um, uh, I would say going back to the conclusion, really, right? Uh, it's really that I feel like Bleed, Fury, AOE, single carry team. Uh, I think those are definitely winners. I say possibly poison, but um, yeah, because Gila is buffed. But of course, uh, the other teams are a bit faster as well. So I would say poison is a bit you know, a tricky spot. Uh, Toad Pass and Leafy are you know, toned down for sure, but still strong. Um, I would say Leafy you know, a bit slower. Toad Pass a bit easier to break through the shields and stuff. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, good, it's a good change because then they don't break the archetype while they're just bringing down the power level a bit so that the other archetypes can catch up so I definitely will uh, definitely look at Bleed, Fury, AoE and maybe even like Triple R and Glorious Main kind of thing uh, and yeah I'm looking forward to really seeing these teams uh, and coming up to the very top uh, I would say the losers are really mainly Sustain and Curse I think those are going to be tough I would say Sustain could still work, it's just that there will be adjustment that need to be made. Uh, just because Twin Tail uh, is going to be tough uh, because now it's limit one and you will need a lot of cleanser right, just to counter the uh, death mark. Okay, so uh, I think uh, this video is long enough, so I will probably end it here. Right, so 
definitely check out the blog post uh, if you're interested uh, to know more. And yeah, that's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next video.